So in today's episode, we're going to talk about understanding oxen herbicides. And uh, again, not, not a new set of compounds here that we're going to discuss today, but things that have been more popular over the last few years. Yeah, Jared, and as we see the increased popularity of soybean trait platforms like the Enlist E3 platform, uh, Roundup Ready to Extend, and now Extend Flex platform, uh, we only expect this uh, to become a more popular option and a very effective option at that. But uh, you've also got, so for example, you've got Ingenio, which is a dicamba that is approved for those Extend Flex or Roundup Ready to Extend acres, but you've also got some of the ones that we're more familiar with or that have been around for a little longer, uh, such as Clarity or Status in Corn. Uh, all of these are auxins, uh, and I think it's important to understand how those work. So I want to focus in on dicamba and 2,4-D because that's what I think we're going to be dealing with the most. And a good place to understand or to start is to understand how those products work. And dicamba and 2,4-D are actually in the same group or classification of herbicides, and they behave very similarly in that they mimic auxins that naturally occur in a weed or in any plant for that matter. Um, so auxins by themselves, they control how a plant grows, they direct its growth, tell it where and how fast to grow, things like that. Uh, but the difference is that a weed can't tell the difference between its own naturally occurring auxins and these auxins that, these synthetic auxins that we are putting into the weeds. And it's basically causing these plants to overdose. And when that happens, uh, it can't control how it grows. And that's why we see the symptoms that we get with applications of 2,4-D or dicamba, which is that twisted growth. Uh, they curl around themselves, the leaves curl around, and in the end, although it's a slow death, it basically causes that weed to grow itself to death. Right, and you know, these have been fairly popular herbicides all over the world. Matter of fact, these are two of the most used herbicides in the world. And part of that's because of their effectiveness and their selectivity. So we got to remember that both 2,4-D and dicamba are selective that work mainly on broad leaves, right? So historically, they've been used a lot in corn. And we talked a little bit about status there or clarity would be a couple brands that are still used in corn. And that's because we can spray corn and get rid of all the broadleaf weeds. In soybeans, uh, primarily, we've used these in a burn down prior to having these traits because they're really good on things like mare's tail, winter annuals. And as we get into season now with these traded crops, they're a great tool for water hemp control. Yes. So we want to make sure to get the most out of these things that we're dialing in the right rates and utilizing full rates. So uh, specifically with Ingenia, don't forget, that's a 12.8 ounce use rate. And we want to make sure we maximize that and get the most out of it. Typically what we see with these oxen chemistries is as we start to cheat the rates back, we also start to see either that rate of control or even just the total control start to wane or be more inconsistent. So it is important that we're utilizing full rates of these products. And also remember that not all of these are the same, Mike. So, you know, there, there are lots of dicambas on the market today and specifically in the corn market. You know, you take something like Clarity, it's an older version, and you may have some competitors out there that have Clarity in them, but they're not sure. always the same, right? So one of the things that I feel we've have unique at BASF is that status product because it is unique. It has dicamba in it, but it also has a second herbicide that helps synergize that dicamba, right. right? It helps basically concentrate all that dicamba in the growing point and really make a little bit of dicamba look like a full rate. And so we're able to utilize those two modes of action together. So status would be a two mode action product that's very safe for your corn that we can utilize to control weeds in a way that not a lot of other dicambas can. So just be aware that again, Choose your options that fit your acre best. And I think in the corn market, you're not gonna find any other dicamba that matches what status can provide. Yep. So Jared, when we're looking at these chemistries and, and dicamba and 2,4-D, there's a couple things that we gotta keep in mind, especially when we think about how they work in a plant, that you need an active growing plant for it to be effective. And if you're in conditions that really aren't conducive for plant growth, you're, you're in conditions that really aren't conducive for those herbicides to work that as fast as we would like them to. So if you think about some of our early spring burndowns where these are they're very helpful on weeds such as mare's tail, uh, very effective, but if we're going out into some cool conditions where that plant's just not growing as fast, uh, the uptake of that herbicide is not gonna be as fast either. So uh, just keep that in mind. We're not telling you not to use them because they're still gonna get you to the same result, but just keep in mind that the, the end result may not come as fast as you would get from an application, say in May or June, where those plants are actively growing uh, because of more optimum conditions. Yeah, and again, it goes all back to the plants growing itself to death. The faster it grows, faster it dies. Right? Absolutely. And, and you know, I think another point to be had, and you may have heard this in some of our other episodes, is weed size plays another role in that, right? Sure. So we still want to go after some small weeds with these things. You know, four inches taller are most of your dicamba or your 2,4-D labels for our labeled weed height. And some of that is the bigger the weed, the more it has to grow and really deplete its resources with that oxen um, in order to kill itself. So we want to make sure we're going after small weeds and not lean on 
um, too much of those tall weeds trying to be killed with a really good and effective product. So again, you know, utilizing this in a program is still a key aspect. You know, we don't want to be putting these dicamba brands out by themselves. You know, these auxins have a little bit of residual with them, but not noth nothing like what we could get out of a group 15 herbicide like Absolutely. a Zidua or an Outlook. So again, great tools here that we've got. Um, but they are unique in their own, right? And so we want to make sure, again, we talked about some of the goods and how effective this can be, but there are some watch outs when we get to applying, whether that's a 2,4-D or dicamba, and especially in the soybean market, you're going to see some additional label parameters. Yeah, Jared, that's an excellent point. Um, and we got to think about how we're applying these too. So these, these come with a different set of considerations compared to some of our other herbicide options. Um, one thing I actually forgot to mention earlier is that these products are also systemic. So they move within the plant. So driving coverage is really not going to be as essential as it would with something like a Liberty application. So now you have the ability to uh, utilize some nozzles that will, will result in larger droplets uh, that, that won't move as easily and you'll still get the coverage that you need because you don't have to get that complete coverage to still get the effective kill. So now we're looking at uh, making sure that we're using the correct nozzles, uh, making sure that we're still using an effective uh, carrier volume. I'd like to see 15 gallons per acre at a minimum. We still have to drive enough coverage. Yes. Uh, but there's other things that we have to keep in mind, such as sensitive species that are downwind and making sure that we're following all of the, the application parameters to not only get an effective kill with these herbicides, but also making sure that those herbicides are staying in the field where they're meant to be. Yep, and utilizing, as you said, that systemic movement in the plant allows that bigger droplet, or, and, and if you wanna think about it this way, it allows us to not have to have as many small droplets. Sure. Yeah. So it helps us keep that application in the field. And whether you're spraying in corn or in soybeans, you know, this all would apply the same, whether you're applying status or ingenia. Um, we wanna make sure that we're very cognizant of what's around us and you'll have success. Um, we've had a lot, numerous, numerous years of successful applications with status and now even with Ingenia that we can go out and kill the weeds in our field and utilize this as a tool. I really think that with the adoption of these traits and also, you know, our corn acre, dicamba is going to be a, a key element in a lot of those. And even as we look at the growth of the Enlist acre, 240 will play that same role. So we want to make sure everybody understands how the chemistry works and hopefully you picked a little bit of that up today and also some of the ways that you can be successful to make sure you get the best weed control for your acre. Hey folks, thanks for watching. The thoughts and comments expressed in these videos are the opinions of the Nozzlehead. Be sure to like and subscribe down below for new videos and content.